Hi, how's it going? Today I'm going to walk you through three core principles that you should implement in your daily vocal practice, like your routine, your practice routine, your warm up routine, right away. And I'll share an example slash exercise of how to implement each one. My last tip is in particular truly game changing because, yeah, it's just so widely applicable. But anyway, before we dig in, I am Gemma. I help singers sing better. I also help singers become artists. You may not have known that one. So find out how we can work together or take advantage of some of my free things or like discounts, affiliate codes in the description below. So can we start with a teeny tiny bit of mindset for those who may be I don't know. Are you somebody who resists doing a daily vocal practice? Do you know the swimmer? His name is Michael Phelps. He's like a 28, I think he's won 28 medals. He's basically the most decorated athlete in the Olympics. The greatest swimmer. More medals, gold medals than any other Olympian past or present. And he is reported to have said that he loves the daily practice of swimming. That's who he is. That's what he does. The performance, the actual competition is something he has to do. The practice of swimming daily is just who he is. And who are you? You are a singer. And what do singers do? They sing because that's who they are. So if you have resistance to practicing your singing daily, you need to switch that mindset. Phelps said, I feel most at home in the water. I disappear. That's where I belong, right? Singing is your home and where you belong. So I just wanted to give you that little flip because I know that a lot of singers I work with have a resistance to practicing every day, but I think they may be thinking about it as a slog, as drilling scales, and it's an opportunity for you to come home, for you to explore, for you to play, for you to be the thing that you are, which is to be a singer. Yes, we perform on stages and we, you know, record in the recording studio, whatever, Actually, the real singing happens in that time you spend just you and your voice figuring it out and playing around. Right, right, right. The tips. Yes, the tips. Three tips. Tip number one is called intention. Tip number two is called attention. Tip number three is called resonation. I wanted to say retention, but I couldn't make up a tip about retention. <laughs> so anyway, so intention. When you set aside time to train your voice or be creative, it's easy to not be intentional, you know, and for that to feel like, or just to feel like no progress is being made really. And when it comes to singing practice, I really think you need to set a clear goal for each exercise. Like, why are you doing that exercise? Many singers will just drill some scales and then sing some songs with a blind faith that they're moving their voice forward in the right direction because they got the reps in, you know, the scale will do the work. Look, provided you're not reinforcing bad habits or fatiguing yourself in the practice, I'm actually really glad that you showed up and got some singing done. That's amazing. But if we could take a little bit more time and be a bit more intentional and strategic about what you did in these vocal practices, you would be super charging your growth as a singer. So how I like to go about this, I love to, I mean, you may have seen some of my short videos where I take like a little excerpt of a song. I love to reverse engineer a song. I want the melody and the lyric of a song to like show me my technical insecurities and like show me the problems here. And once I find the problem, then like the solution is easy. I actually can be quite, it can be like fun and creative. Um, and I'll be inspired to design a bespoke exercise to overcome the hurdle that came up in that song. And then I have the song to test the exercise and see if it actually produced the result that I'm actually looking for. And if it does, then we'll lock it in as a new exercise routine. So let me give you an example of this. So it's this little bit here. My evergreen, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. So yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten notes in there. Yay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just don't want the eh to be too heavy or too light. So I want to find a middle ground for that. Yeah, yeah. And then for the E, to, it kind of loses its body on the E as well. So I might practice 
um that on an sovt so i'll try a blowfish like but i'm thinking about the years i'm singing that and i might play around with how much puff is in my cheeks for me and um, but the problem is I can't always do a blowfish just before I go to sing that line so it's really about locking that in which is what we're going to cover in the next point the next tip attention I'm okay about you being a bit mindless when it comes to a quick warm-up or a cool down again I'm so happy that you're singing and that is brilliant and you're doing your due diligence before and after a performance amazing but if we're training, if we're trying to make change occur, to make the technique better, you need to pay attention. Improving your vocal technique is about updating and sometimes completely rewriting your brain's map for a particular vocalization. This is a neurological event. Have you ever had a technique breakthrough in a lesson from like, or just from watching a YouTube video and you're like, oh my God, I can feel it in my voice. That sounds amazing. And you're like, wow, I fixed this. Um, but then your brain doesn't remember, right? Do you remember? Remember? It can't recreate it. Your brain needs spotlighted repetition, meaning you zero in on what you're doing and you repeat the new way of doing something with your full attention on it to lock it in, right? Let me show you what I mean. You're going to find a note that you would like to, that's the nicest for you to hum. So just glide around and find a note that feels nice for you to hum and sustain a hum like this. So now as I hum that B flat and you hum whatever note you landed on, I want you to think about where your jaw is. Is it explore it where it's dropped a lot, explore it where it's actually kind of clenched and then find the, the home or the middle ground or the perfect place for that to be. Right? So where do you get the most ringiness, buzziness, feeling of resonance? Now, the second thing I want you to experiment with is, okay, where should my tongue be? Or where is my tongue and where, where could it go? And just explore with your tongue being in different places. Okay, so now you have an idea of where your tongue sits in your mouth in an optimal way where it feels like, oh, I can sing that note easily with my tongue sitting there. Now we're getting aware of the tongue. We're also just helping the brain find the tongue, which is fantastic because the tongue is so important in manipulating sound. Um, and we're also opening up a little bit of freedom in the voice as well, allowing ourselves to be able to vocalize without the tongue being fixed or tense in a position. Notice when you're taking breaks in between, when you run out of breath, how do you breathe in? What's your in-breath like? So hum first and then analyze the in-breath you take after the hum. So what I notice is that I actually started by breathing in through my mouth and then finished it off through my nose and my lower abdominal wall released and relaxed and I didn't notice anything happening in my shoulders or my chest. That's what I noticed and that felt good and you can play around with the different ways of you know maybe paying more attention to the lower abdominal wall maybe dropping the jaws you breathe in maybe experimenting with breathing in through the nose versus through the mouth 
So not really telling you that there is, I mean, there are definitely things you want to avoid, like creating excessive tension is always something you want to avoid with your in breath. But I'm more interested in you finding optimal sound for you, you know, and for the case for this for this particular exercise um, and finding flexibility in that and exploring that. And um, there are other things you can pay attention to, like how you onset the note. Um, but that is really the concept I want to instill with you right now is that you need to be spotlighting different aspects of the articulatory system, of the respiratory system, of the resonance, um, of the body, of posture, and being like, what am I doing? And what if I make this change? And does it make it better? And how does it feel? And that you're just helping the brain map better what's more optimal. So your final tip for today is resonation. Good singing is resonant singing because resonance is just free power. It kind of works like um, recycling. You actually don't want all of your vocal power to leave your body. When you sing, you actually want to retain and recycle some of it, like reinvest it back into the system. This is how resonance works. It's a positive feedback loop of acoustic energy. So when you sing, you actually want to create positive air pressure in the vocal tract which helps the vocal folds vibrate because it creates this like cushioning effect of air above and below the vocal folds. That's why these SOVTs, you know, semi-occluded vocal tract exercises like and, and all of those, they work so well And the straw, you know, the singing straw, that positive air pressure is created from there being a sort of like traffic jam of air trying to leave the body and a bunch of like dancing air molecules get fed back to the system instead. So I don't tend to teach projection or support. Um, for me, it's more about like finding the most, like well, always it's about finding the most low effort yet optimal way to sing. Like always seeking the best return on the investment. When technique is fire for me is when the singer is getting the most optimal sound for the least amount of effort. And one of my favorite ways of doing this is implementing what I call a vowel bed. So within every vowel exists a spectrum of all the vowels. Watch, it's a bit trippy. Watch my video on how to access mixed voice and I just go into the science about this but just take my word for it for now. So I'll listen to my voice or the student's voice from coaching and, um, and I'll see if I can hear what part of that spectrum of sound is missing, right? Do we need more bass? Does it need more oh, more mouthy oh, oh sounds? Or maybe it needs a bit more bitey, brightiness. Like <laughs> I said, bitey and brighty there, by the way, like an I sound. Or maybe I need more like, sparkly ease or combo um like give me a bit of uh, bite and thickening from an a ah vowel with the sparkly energy of an e that's why i love a yeah because i've got the sparkly e and i also have the bitey ah. e. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah 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 it's my favorite for getting somebody into like a mix or a belt so let's find a song example that requires me to create a vowel bed for the song. So I want to be able to sing. But I find it, I find that a little lacking in bass. It's a bit light. So the vowel bed I think I'd like to use for this would be a uh, and the consonant W so that I'm going to practice I'm in and out of wo and wa. So that's much tighter for me. Um, 
Um, and I would just need to rep that out a little bit and keep coming back to it. So that little section really gave me that challenge and is helping me adapt my vocal tract to make it more in the way that I want it by using a vowel bed of uh with a little bit of ah and then being very attentive to it like closing my eyes focusing in really listening really feeling it um and zoning in and then testing has that gotten to me to gotten me to my destination and I'm like yes that's the sound that I was looking for and then just repeating that and dialing it in so yeah, those were my three tips for today. Was that helpful? Hit me up in the comments. I read everything. I'll try my best to reply to everything. And don't forget, we could work together and live happily ever after. So check the description for how all of that works. And thank you very much for being here and watching all the way till the end. Thank you. Um, lots of love and happy singing.